the section like a knife. The one to die in the streets, I was blind, now I see. Their physicians of righteousness. The one to die in the streets, I was blind, now I see. The physicians of righteousness. So today class, today's class will be over the prayer of a righteous wife. So we're going to send something to the sisters. You know what I'm saying? Something for my sisters. This is going to be called the prayer of a righteous wife. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that thing, man, because we want uh, our prayers to be answered. You know what I'm saying? I know sometimes sisters might feel like, why do I even pray? The Lord don't even hear me. Lord, sexist. You know what I'm saying? He don't even hear what I'm saying. So I don't even want to pray. So, you know, I want y'all to know that he definitely hear y'all. Definitely want to encourage y'all to pray. So what should we be praying for or about? That's what we should figure out. So, the prayer of a righteous wife. Uh, part of that, part of that, right? I got this question. I want to start here. Uh, let's hit... We're going to start at 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1. Part of that, part of that getting into the prayer of a righteous wife, um, we want to get the, the marriage started on the right page, right? We want to get the marriage started on the right page. So we're going to talk about uh, what things we should do at a wedding per se, right? Because the foundation of it, you know, when we get married, you know, the start of us getting coming into that union is the wedding. So we'll talk about that part first, all right? What should we do? Let's go to John chapter two, and we'll start at verse one. What things should I do at my wedding? John chapter two and verse one. Uh -huh. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, mm. and the mother of Jesus was there. So the third day, so what day is that? That's like, a, so first day, Sunday, second day. Monday, so waiting on a Tuesday, right? So be whatever day of the week y'all want it to be on. You know what I'm saying? I don't recommend it being on Saturday, obviously. You know what I'm saying? But uh, whatever day y'all want to do it on, feel free. All right? Go ahead. And both Jesus was called. And say, read that part again. And both Jesus was called. So Jesus was called. And his disciples. Uh huh. To the marriage. How did he get called to the to the marriage? How did he get called? So sisters, if y'all was wondering. Was it okay to do wedding invites? Let's read the scripture again. And both Jesus was called. They didn't have no cell phone. You know what I'm saying? So, what did they do? I'm sure they had invitations, right? So, if you want to have a nice invitation, a nice wedding invitation or something, there you go. Jesus was called. And his disciples. Go ahead. And his disciples to the marriage. Mm -hmm. And when they wanted wine. What did they want at the marriage? And when they wanted wine. So I would recommend at your wedding that you would have some drinks. You know what I'm saying? Have some wine. You know, I would recommend that. Go ahead. The mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. They have no wine at this wedding. They didn't have no wine. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, woman. What have I to do with thee? Uh -huh. Mine hour is not yet come. Okay. His mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Mm -hmm. And there were set there six water pots of stone. So they had water at the wedding. They had some water. Go ahead. After the manner of the purifying of the Jews, uh -huh. containing two or three firkins apiece. So when they say firkins apiece, that's a, it's a large water pot right when i looked it up it said it looked like a keg you know what i'm saying so they had like six things that looked like kegs right and they was full of water that's what they used to purify themselves because when you would wash yourself right it would be like you would have to wash yourself to your elbow so you need a lot of water you know what i'm saying so read that thing again and there were set there six water pots of stone uh -huh. after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, mm -hmm. containing two or three firkins apiece. So, huge containers, right? And they had water. That's what they had. So, a key component to this wedding, because they ain't had no wine, they just had water, right? Got a budget. 
Got a budget for your wedding. I know a lot of y'all sisters watch Disney movies. And see, uh, what's his name? Prince, uh, there you go. Prince Charming. You know what I'm saying? That's what they see in their head. And that's what they, you know what I'm saying? So the budget goes out the window. Getting your marriage started on the wrong foot with something like that. When you don't set up a, a proper budget within your means, something that y'all can, you know, get to. You know what I'm saying? You don't want to do something gigantic and y'all can't afford it. You know what I'm saying? Now y'all, you got to stay at your mama house and he got to stay at his daddy house till y'all pay off this wedding. <laughs> like, that don't make no sense. Ay, ay, ay. Let's read it again. And there were set there six water pots of stone, mm -hmm. after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, mm -hmm. containing two or three firkins apiece. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Fill the water pots with water. Mm -hmm. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. The what? The who? Unto the governor of the feast. So part of the wedding, right? They had a feast, right? So if you look for scriptures that stuff you should do at a wedding, we see invitations, right? See they had wine. We see they had a feast. Keep going. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine mm -hmm. and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom okay. and said unto him, Every man, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. Mm. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. <laughs> but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Okay, so he's saying, look, you know, you bring out the good stuff early. You know what I'm saying? You let them drink on that. Then you slide out the stuff that, you know, is a little less cheaper. You know what I'm saying? Like me, I like to drink. You know, 20 grand, you know what I'm saying? So you start them off with a little bit of that, and then once they get numb, then you break out the E&J. You know what I'm saying? Break out the Irkin Jerk. You break out the old Irkin Jerk for them, you know what I'm saying? Once they are already a little numb, you know what I'm saying? So, again, man, this goes into planning, you know what I'm saying? Out your wedding, goes into having a budget, sending out invitations. These are things I would definitely recommend you doing. Give me the definition of feast. So they had wedding feast. Give me the definition of feast. What you got? Feast. Mm -hmm. A large meal. Typically one in celebration of something. Mm. A wedding feast. There you go. So there you go. So that's what we had. We had a large meal. So if you want to do something for your wedding, right? We had a wedding feast. Wedding feast. Let's jump to Micah chapter 2. Let's start at verse 9. Micah chapter 2 and verse 9. So like we see, you know what I'm saying, we, we, are, we have in our head, right, what's that show, Bridezilla, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying, Disney movies, I know that's what my sister's got in their head, right? So we see in the scriptures they had a wedding feast. Right, that's what they had. It wasn't that stuff you see on TV, right? Let's look at Micah chapter 2, verse 9. Micah chapter 2 and verse 9. Uh -huh. The women of my people had be cast out from their pleasant houses. Uh -huh. From their children had be taken away my glory forever. So, part of the problem, right? Like the scriptures say, we was taught wrong. You know what I'm saying? So, the interpretation of the things that you have in your mind concerning the wedding. Right, you got you got those things passed down from your parents through TV, wherever you got them from, but it's not biblical. Read on. Arise ye and depart. Arise ye and depart. Leave that stuff alone, man. It's no jumping over the broom, throwing the what they throw the bouquet over your shoulder. It's not in the scriptures, sisters. I'm sorry, it's just not there. There's nothing wrong with having flowers. Flowers are wonderful. We know that the Lord, you know what I'm saying, loves flowers. You know what I'm saying, the lily. Specifically, you know what I'm saying? But uh, as far as all of that, throwing the, the bouquet over your shoulder and stuff like that, it's not, it's not scriptural at all. It's not. Read that thing again. 
Arise ye and depart. Uh -huh. For this is not your rest. This ain't the way. These ain't the customs that you should to jump into. This is not your rest. Don't fall into that same circle. A lot of times, when, again, going back to budgeting, man, I just know that the numbers get crazy. You know what I'm saying? How much you spend? How much you spend on your way? <laughs> well, <laughs> go ahead. All right, so I know we spent in excess of ten grand on our wedding, Whoa. including the honeymoon and all the stuff. So it, it it could probably be even more than yeah. <laughs> Look at face, I wasn't like, controlling the budget at that time. Oh man! I was just like, whatever. This is your thing. Run with it. So you just let it run amok. But now it's like you look at it. You're like, what could we have done with that money? What could we have done with that money? Gosh. Hmm. Antigua was off the hook though. <laughs> you had a good time. We had a good time. But the All other stuff is unnecessary. Alright. Let's read that. Verse where I'm at, verse eleven. Verse ten. Verse ten. Okay. Arise ye and depart. Mm -hmm. For this is not your rest. Mm -hmm. Because it is polluted. What is it? Because it is polluted. A lot of them customs, man, jumping over the broom and all that stuff, man. That stuff comes from like slavery and stuff. Stuff is polluted. Don't try to bring that into your weddings today. Don't try to bring that stuff in there. Go ahead. It shall destroy it. It shall destroy it. Wasting money. Go ahead. You got something? Yeah. I was going to say, what's the other thing, the other custom that the world do, does when it comes to, um, it's like it becomes a, okay, this is supposed to be your wife. Uh huh. But now it gets to the point where you got to sit her down in front of everybody watching. Yep. She has to hike up her dress. Mm. Oh, on her leg see, I forgot about that part. the garter off. The garter off, yep. I'm like, cool. That's some nonsense. Hell, yeah. And everybody getting excited about that stuff. And it's like, you're not even thinking. You're yeah. not even thinking about it. This is my wife. Everybody checking out her thighs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. I know. You know, sister's subconscious anyway. They thinking about it. I might got some cellulite over here, this or that. <laughs> they don't even want to do that part. You know what I'm saying? Be wrapped around their calves. Read that point again. It shall destroy you, mm. even with a sword destruction. So them them weddings, if you don't get it under control, you don't got no budget. You know what I'm saying it shall destroy you. It shall. Let's jump. Jump to uh, Esther chapter two, verse twelve. Esther chapter 2 and verse 12. Okay. Now when every maid's turn was come. So this is making reference to when the sisters was going to uh, visit the king of the Persians and Medes, right? King Ahasuerus. And he was trying to pick a wife. Go ahead, read that thing again. Now when every maid's turn was come mm -hmm. to go in to King Ahasuerus, mm -hmm. after that she had been 12 months according to the manner of the woman... For so were the days of their purifications accomplished. Mm. To wit, six months with oil and myrrh. Mm. Oils of myrrh. Mm -hmm. And six months with sweet odors. So, you know, another thing I would particularly like, you know what I'm saying? My wife should smell amazing on that day. You know what I'm saying? So, I recommend that. I definitely recommend doing that part. All right? Brothers too, man. Brothers, make sure y'all smell good, man. Don't be coming out there smelling terrible. <laughs> um, just hit the gym. Yeah, just hit the gym. Show up. Go get married. <laughs> That's terrible. Let's go uh, to Ezekiel chapter 16. This is making reference to just really laying down a good foundation uh, before we get married. Ezekiel are going into the wedding per se. Chapter 16. We're going to start at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field, mm -hmm. and thou hast increased and waxen great, and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Mm -hmm. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou wast naked and bare. Mm -hmm. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, Thy time was the time of love. So we got we're getting ready to get married. Time was the time of love. So she was all decked out and beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So it's nothing wrong with looking good. You know, from head to toe. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And I spread my skirt over thee mm -hmm. and covered thy nakedness 
Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee. Mm. Say, with thee said the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Mm. Then washed I thee with water. Mm. Yea, I thoroughly washed away thy blood from thee, and I anointed thee with oil. It's all the time of love. I would recommend being anointed with oil. Some I would recommend. You know what I'm saying? Scriptures. Just scriptures. Go ahead. I clothed thee also with broidered work, and shod thee with badger skin, and I girded thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thine hands, and a chain on thy neck, mm -hmm. and I put a jewel on thy forehead, and earrings in thine ears, and a beautiful crown upon thine head. So all of this stuff, man, all of these different um, elements, you know what I'm saying, put a jewel on your forehead, anointing your head, you know, being fashioned from head to toe, you know, say from, you know, verse uh, 7, you know, your hair look good, all of these things. Nothing wrong with none of this stuff. Go ahead. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver, and thy raiment was, was of fine linen and silk, mm -hmm. and broidered work. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. And thou was exceeding beautiful, and thou didst prosper into a kingdom. There you go. And thy renown went forth among the heathen for thy beauty. Mm. For it was perfect through my comeliness. It was perfect through you doing what God said to do and not doing what the world said to do. That's what's going to make us beautiful. Not following and standing those same customs that we see the world follow. I can't think of nothing better than that wedding that we did out on the beach with, with heads and a uh, sis, sis Zora. Um, everybody was stopping us like, but uh, who are y'all? You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, we was made beautiful through that thing. But if we'd have been dressed normal tuxedos and and Ain't like that, bridesmaids, getting all that stuff, it would have been like a, another wedding. Another wedding. But when we showed up like we did, a spectacle. It was. They was like, oh man, y'all look fresh. You think know what I'm saying? Also at Passover. Yeah. Just walking around the streets. People looking at us in our fashion. Mm, mm, mm. Read verse... T -t 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 -t. Read verse 8 again. One more time. Verse 8. Uh -huh. Now when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. The time was the time of love. So it's going into, you know... I'm reading this as, you know what I'm saying? Us going into the time where we get married. You know what I'm saying? The time of love. So we see that, you know, they got their heads anointed, they had the jewels on, all these wonderful things, right? Look at Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. This is the main point that I was thinking about when I was thinking about these weddings and the things we should do. Because like I, like I promised, right, I contacted the leadership of the men over me, you know what I'm saying, the captains, right? I showed you the video, right? So I contacted people of the men over me, asked about their experiences, uh, what things they have seen, What's some best practices, stuff like that, right? This is what I, I really encompass from it more than anything. Matthew 5 and verse 13, please. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Ye are the salt of the earth, mm. but if the salt has lost his savor, mm. wherewith shall it be salted? Mm. It is thenceforth good for nothing. So if we want to just do what everybody else do, just wearing Israelite attire, what did we lose? What's the word? What's the word? Brothers, y'all got any word that we can use in place of saltiness that will make it pretty clear for our sisters to see? What y'all got? Flavor. Come on, stand up, bro. Flavor. He gonna give you the mic. What's the word you say? Flavor. Flavor. What's your name again? Charles. Charles. Okay. Flavor. Right? We lost our flavor. Y'all brothers got anything else? Something else. Culture. Culture. Mm. What you got, Jay? Taste, sir. Ah, that ain't the word I'm looking for. Nah. <laughs> swag. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like that one. Lost our swag. Read that one more time. Ye are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. But if the salt have lost his savor. The word that came to my mind more than anything. It's creativity. Y'all sisters can be creative. We just read scriptures of them getting anointed, of 
of them putting jewels on their forehead. These are things that you can encompass inside of your wedding that would bring the scriptures to life. Instead of, oh, I want to have a bouquet and 17 sisters dressed like me and a bride. That's not scriptural. It's not, like I'm telling you, it's, not, it's no scripture that say that all the sisters dressed alike and went to a wedding party. Like, it's not, it's not there. I'm sorry. I'm not telling y'all y'all can't do that. You know what I'm saying? But at what, it's no scripture that say thou shalt have bridesmaids or thou shalt not. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you it ain't in there. It ain't there. So you being creative or are you following the ways of the world and just regurgitating it with fringes on? Be creative. Let's go to that. Go to 1 John 2.15. Because what was the biggest wedding that was on just about a week ago? I don't know. I ain't watch it. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I ain't watch it either. But I bet you a bunch of people did watch it. <clears throat> What's it what was it again? I think it was the uh, the, uh, the 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 royal wedding. That wasn't no damn royal. The royal wedding. <laughs> royal counterfeit wedding. Counterfeit travesty. <laughs> so and and that's what our sisters do. They look at this stuff. <laughs> And, and they go back to Disney, mm -hmm. and they start thinking about, man. That's what it was. That's what I want. That was Disney came to life on that thing, I'm sure. But when I watched, when, when you watched I it? participated, no. No. Oh. <laughs> in his, in the dars, in their, in their thing, I yes. thought that was something special. Yes. You know, that was something that, I would have watched that on TV. That wasn't his and Mary Adara, though. So that's it, dog. Yeah, you did. Wrong wife, brother. Wrong wife. Wrong wife. You got us over here looking at you. <laughs> and you know, you know, I'm terrible with names. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead and give me that. Uh, first John chapter two and verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Mm. If any man love the world. The love of the Father is not in him. Mm. So that's the thing. We get caught up in watching these things that the world present to us. And we think that we're supposed to be part of that. We're supposed to be just the opposite of that. That's all I got. No praises. Yeah, so I, I would recommend more than anything, man. You're supposed to be creative. Be creative. Look at the scriptures. Pray for, for inspiration. You know what I'm saying? But that's what we're going to talk about anyway. The prayer of a righteous wife. All right? But be creative more than anything. Um, let's go to this. Let's go to the book of Numbers. Let's start with this one. Numbers chapter 30. Sister script the name right here. Numbers chapter 30. We're going to start at just verse 1. Let me just read it down. The prayer of a righteous wife. Numbers chapter 30 and verse 1. Uh huh. And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded. Mm -hmm. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he shall not break his word. He shall do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. So that, I mean, that's why we take that uh, breaking of bread so seriously. You know what I'm saying? You making a vow to the Lord. You shall not break that vow. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth not any of her vows or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul, shall stand. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall forgive her because her father disallowed her. So if he didn't hear it or if uh, he disallowed it, then it don't, it don't count. All right, that prayer from that woman in her youth didn't count. Go ahead. And if she had at all an husband mm. when she vowed or uttered out, out, out of her lips wherewith she bound her soul and her husband heard it and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it then her vows shall stand mm. and her bonds wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. So... She's praying with her husband, and her husband hears that prayer. Something we do every night, you know what I'm saying? Shiloh can't wait to go to bed. He he, he get upstairs, and he throw his hands up in the air. He say, it's time to pray. You know what I'm saying? Every every night. But before he pray, he want to spin around in a circle a couple of times. You know what I'm saying? And he throw his hands up. Oh, Shiloh, though. But it's important to pray as a family. That he see that. That the young man see it. That you and your wife pray together. Why? Because you're supposed to hear that thing. Go ahead. 
But if her husband disallow her on the day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she had which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul of none effect. So the husband can say, Lord, that no. You know what I'm saying? No. Go ahead. And the Lord shall forgive her. But every vow of a widow and of her that is divorced, wherewith they have bound their souls, shall stand against her. Mm -hmm. And if she vowed in her husband's house or bound her soul by a bond with an oath, and her husband heard it and held his peace at her and disallowed her not, then all her vows shall stand. And every bond wherewith she bound her soul shall stand. Okay. But if her husband hath utterly made them void on the day he heard them, then whatsoever proceeded proceeded out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul shall not stand. Mm -hmm. Her husband hath made them void, and the Lord shall forgive her. Okay. Every vow and every binding oath to afflict the soul, her husband may establish it, mm -hmm. or her husband may make it void. Mm -hmm. But if her husband altogether hold his peace at her from day to day, then he establisheth all her vows, or all her bonds which are upon her. He confirmeth them, because he held his peace at her in the day that he heard them. But if he shall make shall any ways make them void after that he hath heard them, then he shall bear her iniquity. Here it come. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife. Between a man and his wife. Sisters, brothers, y'all prayers or y'all goals need to be on the same page. Sisters and brothers, when y'all pray, y'all should be praying in the same direction. Y'all should have the same goals. She shouldn't be in there praying for something you don't even want. Y'all should be on the same page with that thing. Read that part again. These are the statutes which the Lord commanded Moses between a man and his wife. Between a man and his wife. Saying that they on the same page. That's the only reason why the prayer would be disallowed if they weren't on the same page. Go back. Go to uh, Romans chapter 15 verse 5 and that's 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 part of it because we have to be communicating in order to be on the same page mm -hmm. so and that's how we become like-minded you know we have to understand our needs and what needs to be taking place in order for us to be on that same accord yes you got that Romans chapter 15 and verse 5 now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like minded one towards another so we all have to be like-minded one towards another that's within the body and especially in the household mm -hmm. jump down to verse 30. verse 30 now i beseech you brethren for the lord jesus christ's sake and for the love of the spirit that ye strive together with me in your prayers to god for me so we got to strive together on the same, we got to be walking the same path. Mm -hmm. We can't be walking away from each other and expect for our prayers to be answered. We have to be on the same accord. Got to be. Got to be on the same accord. But what happens, what happens is, we'll get to that. Jump to this, jump to this. Go to uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 26. If y'all don't know, I'm reading Proverbs right now, so we'll be in here quite often. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Uh -huh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, mm. for out of it are the issues of life. I like that thing. Read that one more time. Keep thy heart with all diligence. With all diligence. That means you're supposed to be paying attention to the things that you want, right? Your goals. Y'all supposed to be on the same page. Go ahead. For out of it are the issues of life. So if your heart is not in a diligent place or you're not being diligent concerning being on the same page with your spouse right this is what's going to create issues in your life if if he got the truth in his head trying to keep the commandments of god and then you come into the marriage with disney in your brain guess what 
issues of life. That's how it's happening when y'all don't get on the same page. I learned something today. I learned something today. I learned about uh, what was I trying to do yesterday? I was trying to get different stuff done. You know what I'm saying? And uh, my wife asked me for some tuna fish from the store. So I go to the store to get the tuna fish. And she's like, I want albacore tuna fish. So I'm looking up and down the aisle <laughs> for albacore tuna fish. Not knowing that albacore tuna fish is a specific type of tuna fish. I'm looking for a brand. <laughs> so I see Star Kiss and Bumblebee. I'm like, I don't know what this. We wasn't on the same page, though. It's something so simple like that. You know what I'm saying? That could completely throw off us being on track. It's a simple thing, you know what I'm saying? But we have to be able to communicate in order to be to understand what each other understands so we can all be on the same page. I don't know if that helped her. Read that scripture one more time. <laughs> Keep thy heart with all diligence, uh -huh. for out of it are the issues of life. Go ahead. Put away from thee a forward mouth, mm. and perverse lips put far from thee. So... When, you're, when your prayers are going up, you don't want to be in opposition, right? You don't want to be praying with perverse lips in opposition of what each other is trying to accomplish. Mainly, specifically, what your husband wants to accomplish. And I know that hurts, but that's what it is. Keep going. Let thine eyes look right on, mm. and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Let your eyelids look right on. It's saying, make sure you have a proper perspective. In your prayers. That's the thing I think that happens more than anything. Is that the perspective that we as husbands have is different from the perspective that our sisters have. You have to be able to pray with the proper perspective. Let's get into that. Let's go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Let's start at verse 4. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. So this is making reference to our sisters, right? Let it be the hidden man of the heart. Go ahead. And that which is not corruptible, mm -hmm. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. There you go. So when sisters hear meek and quiet spirit, what they think? I'm a doormat. I got to just do whatever you say. I'm just a doormat. Come on, let's look up meek. Give me the definition of meek. Meek. Mm -hmm. Quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on. Mm. Submissive. Mm. Go ahead. That's it for that definition. This is Read that part one more time. I, I, I lost it because of that thing. Quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on. Quiet and easily imposed. Go ahead. Submissive. Submissive. That's it on that definition. What's the what's the, the No, no, no. Give me the synonyms down. Synonyms. Submissive. Uh -huh. Yielding. Obedient. Okay. Compliant. Mm. Tame. Biddable. Tractable. Acquiescent. Humble. The def differential. Mm. Timid. Unprotesting. Unresisting. So you, you you need to be on the this is what you're supposed to be, sisters. Right? Read that scripture again. First Peter chapter three and verse four. Uh -huh. But let it be the hidden man of the heart uh -huh. and that which is not corruptible, mm. even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. Which Give me Matthew chapter eleven and verse twenty nine. Because the question the question is a lot of time other sisters is like what can I do to be to what can I do for the truth you know what I'm saying now watch this thing Matthew 11 29 yes sir Matthew chapter 11 and verse 29 mm -hmm. take my yoke upon you mm -hmm. and learn of me mm -hmm. for I am meek so Christ was meek do that mean Christ was a doormat no but he, he was able to have the proper perspective on whatever it was that he was doing Right? In order to say, okay, this is what I want, but this is God's will. So I got to make sure I do God's will more than what I want. 
That's the perspective that y'all have to have when y'all sending up y'all prayer sisters. Perspective. Read that thing again. No, jump back to uh, Ephesians. Nope, Ephesians. Chapter 4, verse 13. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. Till we all come of the faith mm -hmm. and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, mm -hmm. unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that's what y'all sisters, if y'all want to come to the measure and stature of Christ, it say that he was what? Meek. And when you read in First Peter what the ornaments are that you supposed to encompass, it's meekness and being quiet. <clears throat> That's how y'all get there. What does this have to do prayer? Go back. Peter. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. Okay. And that which is not corruptible. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about Christ. So you being Christ-like. Go ahead. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit. So having a proper perspective. When it's saying meekness, it's talking about you have proper perspective on what it is that y'all want to accomplish when y'all sending up y'all prayers. Come on, read that one time. Meek and what? Meek and quiet spirit. Quiet spirit. Quiet spirit. We all know the definition of quiet. <laughs> Give me a Proverbs chapter 9 verse 13. We all know the definition of quiet. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13. Uh-huh. A foolish woman is clamorous. That's not quiet. That's the opposite of quiet. The problem with being clamorous or being loud, how can you ever get on the same page with your husband so your prayers can be answered? That's why it's important for you to be meek and be quiet so we can get on the same page and say, okay, I understand this. I understand why you think this is the best way to go or why we should do this, do that. We should send up prayers in this direction. I understand it. But it's impossible for y'all to understand each other, get on the same page. If she clamorous, right, and not meek, you just can't. You can't do it. Read that thing one time. A foolish woman A is... A foolish woman, go ahead. Is clamorous. Mm. She is simple and knoweth nothing. So, if you're not quiet... And you're clamorous, that's foolish. You're going to destroy your household that way. Right? So you got to have the proper perspective in your prayer. And you got to also be able to be quiet. So you can hear what it is that your husband trying to get to. And if you don't have no goals, maybe your husband don't have no goals. So you can, y'all can sit down and, and discuss it. But if you come into it, rah, 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 then nobody can't hear nobody nothing. Neither way. Hmm. Let's go back. Give me... So, let me say this. So, being meek doesn't mean being a doormat, right? That's not what it means. It just means that you're able to have perspective, right? And a lot of times what happens in the truth is that our sisters tend to jump into a place where it's like, you care more about the body than you care about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's like, am I right? Am I wrong? Is that, is that what y'all brothers experience? Facts. <laughs> Facts. Right? You had some? No, go ahead. No? Go ahead. Okay. So, why is that? Why is that happening? That the sister feels like, you know what I'm saying, in the marriage, she feels like he cares more about the body than he does for me. And how can I make sure that when I'm praying that I'm getting what it is that I want? Go to, go to that First Peter's again. Gotta remember this thing. First Peter's. First Peter chapter three, three or, I think it's verse seven, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, good enough. Verse seven. Uh -huh. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. Okay. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Go ahead. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, mm -hmm. that your prayers be not hindered. So the prayers will be hindered, right? If y'all not on the same page. So you sisters gotta understand that you do have a father in heaven. If you feel like, because it's a feeling most of the time, that your husband is like, care more about the body than you, and talk to the brothers, and he's not giving you the necessary time, you got to understand that the scriptures say that 
his prayers will be hindered. And you don't want that thing to happen, right? So you got to find the right way to get y'all on the same play, on the same page. Read that scripture one more time. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, mm -hmm. giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, okay. and as being heirs together of the grace of life. That your prayers be not hindered. So why would your prayers be hindered? Why would his prayers be hindered? Who can who can answer that for me? Why would his prayers be hindered? Because we just read in Numbers that he can shut down his wife's prayers. Why would his prayers be hindered? Got some? Come on. Perez had his answer. What I got out of that is that he's not assuming his proper role and running this house, so I guess basically what she says goes and they're, you know, <laughs> off <laughs> base with one another. Am I wrong? Or, I'm confused. It's like they're off wrong. base with one another. Like, he's right. telling her this is what she wants, but she's like that rebellious spirit. <laughs> well, I don't want to do that. So is that, or did I get that out of context? I'm confused. I don't know where you're going. Like, I feel like I'm losing it. Yeah. Say it again. Say one time. In reference to the topic we're talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like his prayers being hindered because they're not on one accord, basically. Right. He's saying one thing, but she's like completely against that. I don't right. want to do that. Right. So, what is that showing yeah. us? What do you mean? What is that showing us as husbands? I guess that we need to dwell with them according to knowledge. True. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody got something else? No? You got something else? Go ahead. What is the one instance in which your prayers will not be heard? Uh, one instance that your prayers will not be heard if you're not following the commandments. The loss. Right, right. So how is the Most High looking at that if you two are not on one accord? So the most high is looking at that like, you know, you don't love them. You're not following them. Mm. Okay, you just said it though. Not keeping the commandments. What's another word for it? Disobedience. One word. We say it all the time. Superman has an Sin. 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 Exactly. Yes. It's sin. Yeah. Where'd you go? Okay. Go back to first. First Peter chapter three and verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands, go with them according to knowledge, uh -huh. giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, mm. and as being heirs together of the grace of life, mm. that your prayers be not hindered. So the thing I really want you sisters to understand is that you do have an advocate. In heaven. Y'all do have an advocate in heaven. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want y'all to feel like y'all shouldn't pray. But we got to have a proper perspective when we pray. Let's go to, uh, go ahead. Before you move on. Yep. Let's go back to, um, you were saying that sisters feel like... Um, Doormats. They're be doormats. They're being neglected because their 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 husbands are yes. are involved with the body, doing mm -hmm. things for the body. Mm -hmm. And you was asking why would they feel that way? Mm -hmm. And maybe that's because the sisters feel like they don't really have a place in the body yes. outside of just coming here on the Sabbath or cooking leavened bread or whatever it is. But your sisters got to realize that you do have a purpose. Go to First Corinthians twelve and twelve because. A lot of things that you sisters know that you learn through the world, we don't know that stuff. You could bring a lot to the table. So don't feel when it says, the scripture says, the, sister, the women be quiet in the churches means y'all just need to shut up shut up, and not have no input on anything. Right. That's just talking it's about a time and a place for it. Exactly. Yes. But you guys bring a lot to the table. Yes. Don't hold that stuff back. Go ahead. First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12. For as the body is one, and had many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. Exactly. So we are many members, right? When it's talking about the body, it's talking about the nation of Israel. We are all one body, but we have many members. We have many functions. So you got sisters that are 
good with administration stuff. Sisters that may have knowledge as to helping people out in their job situations. There's many functions, so don't feel that you don't have a place. That's, what, that's part of the prayers that you need to be sending up as to find a direction of what you're supposed to be doing in this body. Yes. And your husband, you need to be helping them with that as well. Give me a Genesis chapter 19. Let's start at verse 13. So, we talked about having proper perspective, right? When we send in our prayers. We're going to go back to meekness right quick. Give me Genesis chapter 19, verse 13. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 13. Uh -huh. For we will destroy this place. So what's happening right here, right? This is Sodom and Gomorrah about to get destroyed. The angels are talking a lot, right? Go ahead, read that again. For we will destroy this place. Okay. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. Okay. And the Lord has sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get ye out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. So he seemed like he was crazy. All right, go ahead. And when the morning arose... Then the angels hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. All right. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife. So look, so the, these angels grabbed him up by the hand. Come on. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, mm. neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountains, lest thou be consumed. So he said, so the angels told Lot to go to the mountains. Let's see what Lot said. Go ahead. And Lot said unto them, Oh, not so, my lord. So he said, I don't want to go to the mountains. Go, go ahead. Behold now, thy servant hath found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me, and saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Okay. Behold now, this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. So he said, let, let me go over there to that city over there. You know what I'm saying? At least in that place, there's some people over there. You know what I'm saying? Go to this little city. Go ahead. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing. That I will not overthrow this city. So he said, I ain't going to overthrow that city, that little city. Go ahead. For the which thou hast spoken. Uh -huh. Haste thee, escape thither. For I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. So that's where Lot went. He went to a city called Zoar. Go ahead. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zoar. Uh -huh. Then the Lord reigned upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah. Brimstone and fire. So you gotta bring it to perspective what's happening right here, right? So Lot and them is out of the out of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? They was in the mountains, but they said, Hey, we want to go to this city over here, right? Okay. So they in a city now. They not just out in the in the wilderness nowhere. They in a little city. Go ahead. From the Lord out of heaven, and he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities. And that which grew upon the ground. Uh -huh. But his wife. But his wife. So look, so they in the city, right? They not like in the middle of nowhere. They in the city, chilling. It's stuff there to do. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Looked back mm -hmm. from behind him. And she became a pillar of salt. So instead of being meek, instead of having the proper perspective, she decided to look back over there. It's important. It's important that we able to establish that meekness, sisters. Because again, when the Lord come, the message, like we can see, like it's happened over and over and over again, right? The message came from Adam. The message came, I mean, from God to Adam. The message came uh, from the angels to Lot here. You know what I'm saying? So these messages of when it's time to move, they're going to come from your husbands. They're going to be like, look, it's time to roll. And if you ain't able to be meek and quiet, I'm like, look, we got to go. Chief, I want to argue. I, I want to grab this and this. Come on, Shiloh. <laughs> we out. <laughs> Get all that stuff over there. I'm not getting that. It's time to roll. 
Y'all gotta have a proper perspective. Understanding that the, 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 the message of this destruction has came this way repeatedly. Go ahead. But the scripture said, I'm, I'm gonna take a, just a little bit of fire off the sisters. Mm. But, the, but you husbands, like it says, dwell with them according to knowledge. Right. So it, you can't just expect them to get up and follow you nope. if you haven't been leading all the time. Showing a proper example. Showing a proper example. So I'm so, I say that to the brothers all the time, man. I don't I don't know no nice way to say it, but you know, getting your wife on the same accord with you starts with you doing it. You dig what I'm saying? Again, man. I got a planner, right? I've been working on my planner. I've been consistent with my planner. Guess what my wife got. She's writing in it right now. She got, you know what I'm saying? But guess what? I show forth that example of trying to get stuff more organized and being more consistent with how I'm doing things. I try to tell y'all, man, all the time, man. Just do it. If you doing it, they'll start following. But you gotta do it. Don't be like, you need to do this and tell this it. and this. Don't yeah, tell it. I'm telling you, I'm need to do this. You. Yeah, and then it don't, then it don't never work. I can't figure out why she won't listen to me. Give me a precept. <laughs> yeah, give me a precept. Let me bust it with the Bible. <laughs> That's not gonna work, bro. You gotta do it. You do it. They'll follow. Give me that. Give me Galatians three sixteen. I like. I mean Genesis three sixteen because I just like that scripture. I ain't write it down. Genesis chapter three and verse sixteen. Mm -hmm. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. And thy conception. Mm -hmm. And sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Stop. Do women. Y'all can just say yes or no. Do women have labor pains when they going through pregnancy? Is that true or false? That's true, right? Okay, so if that's true, go ahead. And thy desire. And her desire. Shall be to thy husband. So that part is true too. Yes. Not just the part at the top where it says she got labor pains. The whole scripture is true. So guess what? Whoa. Whoa. Read that. <laughs> Read that one again. Yeah. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow mm -hmm. and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. It says shall be. Mm -hmm. In other words, it should be towards thy husband. Yeah. But if you're not doing that, because it was pretty definite with, with the labor pains, right? It's like, you're going to have these labor pains. <laughs> yeah. But it said, it shall be towards your husband. Yep. Meaning you got to set forth the right example so she have something to follow. Even with prayer, even going back to prayer. You know what I'm saying? Her prayer should be in accordance with yours. If you setting forth the right example. Where was I at? Go back to... Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was at Genesis 19. I'm done with that. Right. So we see that Lot's wife, she didn't have a proper perspective. She didn't have no meekness, and she got destroyed. Because he told her, and he said, come this way, and we put her in the city, everything. But not quiet, not meek, destroyed. Come on, give me First Samuel chapter 1. Let's take a verse 8. All right, so anyway, it's a dude named Elkanah, right? He got uh, two wives, Hannah and some other woman. I don't think I... Her name in here. I don't know. But he, he had two wives, right? And uh, Hannah and this other sister. And uh, the other sister had kids. Hannah did, right? Come on. First Samuel chapter 1 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. Then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, mm -hmm. why weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? Mm -hmm. And why is thy heart grieved? And not I better to thee than ten sons? So, Elkanah was aware of what his wife wanted. She wanted a child. Right? Go ahead. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh. And after they had drunk, now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Uh -huh. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Okay. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a, a man-child. So she was aware, right? So her husband was aware of the prayer and the things that she wanted. You dig what I'm saying? So now she in there praying to the Lord for this child. Go ahead. Then I will give him unto the Lord 
all the days of his life. Uh -huh. And there shall no razor come upon his head. Oh, yeah. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Oh, yeah. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. Mm -hmm. And Eli said unto her, How long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. Mm -hmm. And Hannah answered and said, No, my lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. So, sisters, if, if the perspective that you have is that your, your husband is not on the same page as you, you spend more time with the brothers at the school, you know what I'm saying? There's something you could be praying for right here. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's saying that she was praying out of a sorrow, sorrowful spirit, I guess. So if you're feeling sorrowful about the thing, I don't know what it would be, but it's better than us. What we used to do, I'll just say that. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. Go ahead. But I poured out my soul before the Lord. Read that part again. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. This part right here. But have poured out my soul before the Lord. So in your prayer, pour out your soul. Speak to him, you know what I'm saying? With with your whole heart, you know what I'm saying? Give him all you got. You know what I'm saying? She poured out her whole soul. Um, this is another example of our sister's prayer. You know what I'm saying? With perspective, with her husband being on the same page. And we know that what happened with Hannah. She ended up having Samuel. You know what I'm saying? Her and her husband was on the same page. She poured out her whole soul. The Lord, you know what I'm saying, brought that thing to pass. Let's jump. Give me uh, Exodus chapter 20. Just things, ways to pray and bring it into prayer, proper perspective. All right, let's go to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Honor thy father and thy mother, mm -hmm. that thy days may be long upon the land mm -hmm. which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, if your child, this is going into children, right? If your child does not listen or honor you. That child is going to die early. Hmm. Jump, jump to 2 Kings chapter 2. No, I don't want that. Uh, Proverbs 10 and 1. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father. Mm -hmm. But a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. So, in your prayers, you want to have proper perspective of your children and what they got going on. You don't want to have a foolish child. Bring that into perspective in your prayer. This is a prayer of a righteous woman. She and thought about, okay, this child, if he out of line, if he not keeping the commandments, if he unruly, this is what I'm be brought. This is what's gonna happen to me. Come on, give me a Second Kings chapter two, verse twenty-two. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 22. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 22. Uh -huh. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha. So Elisha, though, this dude was, the, was a man of the Lord, right? Go ahead. Which he spake, and he went up from thence unto Bethel. Uh -huh. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth, Little children. So it came for some little kids. Go ahead. Out of the city. Uh -huh. And mocked him. They was doing what? And mocked him. So they making fun of old Elisha out there. This is a man of the Lord. Go ahead. And said unto him, Go up, thou bald head. Go up, thou bald head. So he's making fun of this dude because he ain't have no hair. These kids. These unruly kids. Go ahead. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. And there came forth two she bears. Out of the woods. So these bears came out of the woods to deal with these unruly kids. Go ahead. And tear forty and two children of them. So part of your prayer, man. You don't want your kids to come to an early te death. You know what I'm saying? I know none of you sisters want that. So you definitely want to have that perspective on where your children are, what their mindset is. You want to have that. Hmm. Acts. Nope. Let's go to 2 Maccabees chapter 7. 
Let's start at verse 20. First Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 20. Uh -huh. But the mother was marvelous above all mm. and worthy of honorable memory. Mm. For when she saw her seven sons slain within the space of one day, mm. she bare it with a good courage mm. because of the hope that she had in the Lord. So that perspective that she had in the Lord, she was able to deal with whatever was going on. Go ahead. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language. Filled with courageous spirits mm. and stirring up her womanish thoughts with a manly stomach, she said unto them, Dang, look at that thing. Read that thing one time. That's heavy. Read Yea, that. she exhorted every one of them in her own language. Mm. Filled with courageous spirits. She was so again, when it go back to being meek, it don't mean you're not courageous. When it go back to being quiet, it don't mean you're not courageous. You just able to bring that thing into proper perspective. Come on. Go ahead, Jenny. The point I always get from this, right? She yeah. clearly had a husband because she had kids, right? Yeah. So where she learned how to be like that? There you go. This is the type of what you said. Oh, man. Go ahead. Verse 7, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in her own language, filled with courageous spirits, and stirring up her womanish thoughts. With a manly stomach, she said unto them, mm. I cannot tell how you came into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it I that formed the members of every one of you. Mm. But doubtless the creator of the world, who formed the generation of man, and found out the beginning of all things, mm. will also of his own mercy give you breath and life again, mm. as you now regard not your own selves, for his law's sake. So that's something that, so bringing that into perspective for your children is something that, a, a level of courage that you could be praying for. You know what I'm saying? Let's jump over to uh, verse 40. Verse 40. So this man died undefiled mm -hmm. and put his whole trust in the Lord. So her sons was able to do that, right? Them seven sons that went through this, if you read the whole chapter, they all will died undefiled because of the proper perspective that their mother had. Go ahead. Last of all, after the sons, the mother died. After this, the mother died. So she died too. And that through what I'm sure it was some torturous way. Because all of them all died in a very torturous way. Way. Yeah, I was going to say, you really got to read this chapter to really get a picture of what was going on. They didn't just hold a gun or, or <laughs> spear to their heart and say, well, They was frying them dudes in crock pots. <laughs> so these, the, the integrity of these brothers, because of what they was taught by their parents, mm -hmm. is showed. Yep. Yes. Yes. Come on. Jump to uh, Acts. Acts chapter 9. Oh, I did write it down. Acts chapter 9. Let's do verse 36. Acts chapter 9 and verse 36. Uh -huh. Now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. What was the disciple's name? Named Tabitha. Mm. Which by interpretation is called Dorcas. Mm -hmm. This woman. This So this woman. This woman was a disciple. This woman was, she had proper perspective. She had disciplined herself in the laws of God. Go ahead. Was full of good works mm. and alms deeds, which good she works did. works and alms deeds. See what I'm saying? This is good. Sisters, part of y'all sending up those prayers, you didn't say you want to have alms deeds. You know what I'm saying? Something so simple like, uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? The many things y'all do, man. Like helping out on the Sabbath. Passing out wires. Doing stuff for the kids. All of those things are like alms deeds. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we know money. But uh, those other things, too. Those are good works, I guess. Go ahead. And it came to pass in those days mm -hmm. that she was sick and died. Mm -hmm. Whom when they had washed, they laid her in an upper chamber. Mm -hmm. And for as much as Lydda was nigh to Joppa. Lydia, Lydia, Lydia. Not a, it was close to Joppa. Go ahead. And the disciples had heard that Peter was there. There's, they sent unto him two men, 
-hmm. desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Mm -hmm. Then Peter arose and went with them. When he was come, they brought him into the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping, and showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made while she was with them. Mm -hmm. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed, and turning him to the body, said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. Mm. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. So part, so you got to bring it to perspective that doing these things, right, will deliver you from death. Man, I was thinking about that thing. Go ahead. No. So I'm kind of hopping back a little bit. Yeah. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 7 real quick, though. Just going to the top of, you know, how your children will be affected. Mm-hmm. Based upon that, seven fourteen, First Corinthians chapter seven and verse fourteen, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. Else were your children unclean, but now are they holy? Because guess what? If you, if the wife is uh, going against everything the husband says, hey, the husband said, hey, no, don't go do this. Trying to set order in the house, and then she's going behind him. You can do whatever you want. Your dad's not home. It's cool. You can do what you want. That does two things. One, it shows that she doesn't really believe. Two, it shows, guess what? Now your children are going to be unclean of the foul because now they're going getting two different answers. And guess what? I know what I was doing. I'm going with the answer I like. That's it. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 10. Nope, oh, I didn't want that. I'm sorry. Just uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. I'm sorry. First Peter, 3, 12. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, mm. and his ears are open unto their prayers. So, if you sisters are keeping the commandments of God, the Lord is hearing your prayers. I understand what Numbers 30 says. You know what I'm saying? If y'all got the proper perspective in your prayer, he's hearing, he's hearing you. We're going to come back to that. Go to uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. We're going to come right back. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25. And this is the thing that I would say to you, sister, that's having that issue. Having those struggles within your spirit. That my husband's always over here doing this or that. This is what I would say to you. That you should implement along with that perspective. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 25. Uh -huh. And every man that striveth for the mastery... Is temperate in all things. So if you want to be praying, especially for your husband, you want him to develop what? Temperance. A proper balance in his life. That's the main prayer that I, if, if that's if that's the concern that you're having that he's spending too much time here or he don't do much of this or this or that, that he develops temperance, which means proper balance. Read that one more time. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. That's what you want. That's the type of husband you want. You don't want that, trust me, you don't want that husband that's just up under you at all times. You don't want that. I know some of y'all sisters might be like, yes, I do. Trust me, you don't. You don't want that type of man. You know what I'm saying? You want him to be temperate. You want him to be balanced. That's what's going to create mastery. Go back to Proverbs. I mean, not Proverbs, to the... Uh, yeah, first Peter. First Peter chapter three and verse twelve. Uh -huh. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, mm -hmm. and his ears are open unto their prayers. So if you bring into your prayers proper perspective, proper uh direction on your prayer, and you praying for what God wants you to have, which is a man of the mastery, which is temperance, then your prayers will be answered. Those are the things that you should be praying about. That your husband develops proper temperance, proper balance, that your children, right, are not out there running wild, you know what I'm saying, because gonna, they're going to lead to an early death, and that you are able to have proper perspective on all of those things and not be blind to uh, what your children are doing or what your husband is trying to accomplish in him keeping the commandments and doing things for the body of the spirit. Those are the things I would recommend praying for. That's it. That's all we got. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels.
Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.